Well, we are in the midst of Holy Week for Christians around the world, and we thought we'd brush up on our knowledge of the traditions that make this week so sacred. Easter Sunday is a major feast in Christian communities celebrating Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And we welcome to the show Father Ron from St. Cyril of Alexandria Catholic Church. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been really excited to have you on the show. Oh, thank you. Please to come. Good. And share what's <laughs> happening in this very busy week. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want to start actually with Lent as a whole. Mm -hmm. So we celebrate it 40 days and 40 nights. But when you actually count up the days, it's 46 days. Yes. Well, that's why uh, we start a little bit earlier. It's not just sev seven weeks or six weeks within that. Sundays actually aren't Lent. They're not. No. Oh, so okay. I could eat whatever exactly. I gave up on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Dang. Where was this right. information 40 days ago? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. It is not. And so it is the 40 days up to, and it had been up to Holy Saturday, but our Second Vatican Council in the 60s, they moved it back. That Lent ends tonight. Okay. Okay, it ends tonight. But they didn't make it Ash, Ash Monday. So you right. got two free days in the 40. Oh my God. Well, you know, and I always was told that St. Patty's Day was an excuse to let, you know, let go of your Lent That's promise. That's right. <laughs> well, yeah, th within the Irish community, they do it. But then but the Italians would come back on the 19th for St. Joseph's to have their St. Joseph's mm. table and stuff. So it's, you know, we recognize that it's also a period of time in, of reflection and right. prayer, but, recognize, but we're not, you know, steeped in sin, but we're moving out of that. We've been saved with the Lord's resurrection, so. Right. Yeah, from that. And so this yeah. weekend in particular is the holiest weekend. Right. in the Catholic faith, mm -hmm. starting with today, Holy Thursday. Mm -hmm. We actually began it on Sunday. Palm Sunday right. begins it. And so we celebrate the entry of, Je of Jesus into Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the tradition has been to bring palms, whole palms. Interesting, when you get into other areas of the world that, well, they wouldn't have palms at this time of year, or they don't have them anyways. Like with our Polish community here at St. Cyril, we have a, a group that tells us, oh, they show us, they use a, a decorative floral. Oh, cool. And they will use that put that together and use that as their palm. But something that waves because of the whole sense of they took branches from the trees and were waving it as the Lord came in. So although we use palms, other communities would use different aspects of that. And that enters us into Holy Week and then begins with Holy Thursday, begins what we call the sacred triduum, sacred three days. Holy Thursday through Easter Sunday. So. And so that's Good Friday, Holy Saturday. But tell us about the significance of Holy Thursday with mm -hmm. the Last Supper and the washing of the feet. So it was traditionally, we hold that the, this particular aspect, the Last Supper, occurred on the Seder meal at Passover. Uh, Jesus being, of course, Jewish. And so the, but what he does in the course of that meal, he institutes the Eucharist or communion for us, taking the matzah, taking the cup of wine, and saying that this becomes his body and his blood. And in the three Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they talk about that. In the Gospel of John, he doesn't. He doesn't talk about that at all. They're at the Last Supper, but Jesus washes their feet. And he tells them what he's done for them, they're to do for others. And so he models this whole thing of service. And he says to them, do this in memory of me. That becomes the link with all the other Gospels. You're doing this in memory of me. And so the washing of feet is a very symboled action that we do in a Holy Thursday Mass to remember that, not just in Jesus doing it, but to remind us that we're supposed to be the servants now. Mm -hmm. The servants now. So Holy Thursday celebrates those two pieces, the institution of the Eucharist, our Mass, and the washing of feet as it is for service. We come to the Eucharist to be nourished, to be of service. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that John didn't write about it in his gospel. Right. Why didn't he? Um, not sure. Okay. But he picks up on a different, his gospel is very changed in its dimensions. He writes later, so it's with some more reflection. In fact, we use his passion narrative on Good Friday. And for him on Good Friday, Jesus is not a victim, but rather he's the one who has given himself up. Mm. And so he takes it from a very you know, proactive viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Jesus is doing this sacrificial offering of himself for his people. So it's a little bit of a change with that. John's got a different angle, but he writes much later, so maybe it's the part of the theological reflection in those years after. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, Good Friday is the day that Christ was uh, crucified. Right. And so we look at that, and so in our service that day, we, we do tell the story of the Passion. We also celebrate the Stations of the Cross, remembering that journey, but really trying to use them as a, a lens through seeing how are we journeying with the Lord today, and who's been carrying that cross, who's serving. And we do, as a part of that service, we do a veneration of the cross. Uh, now, Catholics are known for having crucifixes. But on this day, which calls for a cross, a symbol of victory. And that as a part of the celebration, what happens is, is that we come forward after hearing the story of the Passion, 
come forward and to venerate the cross and to recognize this great gift the Lord has given to us. So where on Thursday we do this big washing of the feet, on Friday we do this veneration of the cross. And, and the veneration is it, the, uh, the prayer, It'll the depend on some the of the various uh, traditions to kiss the cross, to just to reverence it by touching it, to uh, do a genuflection, to vary the people according to their ways, but it's taking time with the cross of recognition of that. And then Holy Saturday, when I was growing up, was always the super long mass. Oh, yes. It used to be dope. <laughs> but Holy Saturday itself has a whole thing going on in the daytime. And this is one of those pieces that kind of throw people off. You know, in our creed, we will say he descended into hell. And they get a little bit upset. Well, the whole point is that he's not lying dead. And we didn't believe he's lying dead in mm -hmm. the tomb. But he'd gone among the dead. And oh. he's bringing them out. He's opening the tombs and bringing out. Resurrection is starting. So is that what that means? He descended mm -hmm. from hell? hell. Okay. And he's bringing them up. And so they have, particularly from the Eastern traditions, they'll have icons called the harrowing of hell. And you see Jesus going among, as we show on the, the images here, going among the dead and bringing them up. And so that's during the day. And then the evening comes and it's the night watch. And so that's the long mass and we celebrate the resurrection. Uh, and there's lots of symbols. I say we pull out all the stops. That yeah, night, I know? mean, it is, it is truly a beautiful mass. Yeah. It really Because you have the lighting of the new fire, so you're starting in darkness. It's the whole imagery of, you know, Christ overcoming the darkness of sin with his light. And so you are gathered in darkness. It's lighting the fire. And oh, now you start to see the people that are gathered with you, you know. And then taking that fire and lighting the candle, the Easter candle, and, uh, which is a symbol of Christ. But it also does this whole imaging of being led through the desert in the night with the pillar of fire. So it touches back to the Exodus event and bringing forward that this is Jesus' Passover and the whole leading us forward with light. Father, we have to go, but quickly, just mm -hmm. tell us the tradition of the egg you brought of. And so, and one of the things of Easter is the egg. That also touches back to our uh, Judaic roots. At the Seder meal, they have an egg. It's a symbol of new life. It's a symbol of new life. And coloring the eggs comes out of an Eastern tradition, too, in the with the Polish community amongst us, but also other Eastern European, they paint them up in very, very ornate fashions. They're called Pizanskis. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we get our, our Easter eggs mm -hmm. and the coloring of these eggs. I'm not sure why the bunny brings them. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's more ornate than Amanda and I, yeah. Uh, yeah. our little arts yeah. and crafts thing. All right. Well, Father, thank you so thank much you for so taking much. the time. You're most to welcome. Come in. May you well, all have a happy Easter. You okay, too. For Mass Times, I, I thought you were going to say, and also with you. Oh, that would work too. <laughs> For Mass Times and the Holy Week schedule at St. Cyril's Parish, just call 795-1633 or go online to stcyril.com. Again, that's 795-1633 and stcyril.com. Well, coming up in the Morning Blend, we'll be pairing wines with all your favorite Easter dishes. Plus, it's far better than your typical scrambled eggs and bacon. We'll tell you about a brunch that will have you trying everything there that's coming up right after the break.